Hey everyone, this is Dan and I'm here to help you build your wealth, generate income, and reduce those taxes. And today the topics is kind of, well, it can be both exciting and t challenging, kind of just depends on your take. This is really just how families handle their money. Now, I'll be honest with you, for some of you, talking about money in a relationship can be a bit like walking through a minefield, but it's almost one of those things that you have to have. It's just these important conversations. So whether you're just uh, you know a newlywed family or you've been maybe together with decades, maybe you've blended families, you know, finances require some communication, some mutual respect, if you will, and then kind of a game plan. So these ideas or these tips are just designed to kind of foster that uh, so that you don't have the conflicts and build that financial future as a family. So there's a couple things. We're going to look at four different tips or tricks or rules, if you want to call them that. Number one is follow what's called the 95% rule. Now, I want to say this from the start. Not every one of these ideas is perfect for every situation. You can adjust you can manipulate the numbers and make it fit more your situation. So basically the first tip is again, the 95% rule. So here's kind of how it works. Every single dollar that you and or your spouse earns goes into a joint account. Now from this account, you're gonna pay all your bills, whether they're necessary or discretionary, big, small, car payments, house payments, bills, utilities, all that good stuff. Now this approach ensures that both of you are fully aware of where the money is going, and then it makes budgeting and financial planning just a lot easier to do. But here's the key. After you've allocated your funds for bills, savings, and investments, now remember, you should always be paying yourself first, meaning you need to be able to save and invest at least 10%, and hopefully building up to 20% from that point on. Okay, so we got 95% going into this joint account. What happens to the 5%? Well, this you might call a splash fund. This is where each of you get a little financial independence. And you can have separate checking accounts if you like for this. But however you decide, whatever you decide, there's no judgment. You do anything you want to spend this 5%. No one has any say over each other how they spend this money. So whether it's on a, a new hobby, uh, a special treat, or something that you've been eyeing for a while, this money is yours to enjoy without needing to discuss it first. Now what this does, it allows both of you to kind of contribute to the household while also maintaining a little bit of independence, which can be incredibly important and healthy for relationships. Now the second idea, the second tip, is to create a financial scoreboard. Okay, what is that? Well, this might sound like a bit technical, but it's actually just a straightforward and powerful tool of staying on top of your family finances. So I've been at this for 38 plus years, and I've seen this so many times. You see, in a family, there's usually one person who's a little more interested in the finances than the other. Maybe you are the numbers person, uh, maybe that's why you're watching this video, or maybe that's your spouse. But here's the thing, both of you need to be involved in the planning, if you will. You don't have to love it, but it's important that you at least understand it and be part of the conversation. A financial scoreboard is essentially a weekly or monthly review of where you stand financially. And it should include things like income and expenses. In other words, are you tracking how much you're bringing in and where it's going. And then you need to talk about your savings goals. Are you on track to meet those short-term and long-term savings? And remember, you wanna make sure you're at least saving 10% of your total income. Then it's not a bad idea to look at investment performance. How are your investments doing? Do you need to make some adjustments or some reallocations? Now remember, many investments are in markets that do have fluctuation, so don't panic in down markets and don't get too excited in up markets. Just make sure that the asset that you're invested in makes sense for you in terms of risk and time. The next thing to talk about is debt management. What's your current debt situation and how are you progressing and paying off that debt? especially crazy debt that includes credit cards at 18, 20, 22%.
Now remember, there is good debt and there's bad debt. Bad debt, the credit cards. Good debt, maybe a mortgage or other investment real estate that you have loans against. Now what I'd do is set kind of a regular time, say, you know, every other Sunday or every Sunday, and sit down together, review the scorecard. Now by taking time to regularly assess your financial health, you're not only preventing potential issues from snowballing out of control, but you're also kind of strengthening the family's finances toward common goals. Now this third tip might save a lot of arguments, and that is establishing a spending threshold. So what that is, is this is the amount of money that either of you can spend without needing to check in with the other. Now, this isn't the splash fund where you get to go spend something on yourself, but here's how it might work. Let's say you decide that that amount is $200 or $500 or a thousand, whatever that is. This is for larger expenses. And again, outside of your fund money, your splash fund, so to speak. Anything below that amount, you can kind of spend freely without needing to get each other's approval, particularly if it's for the family. However, if that purchase exceeds that threshold, for instance, uh, a car or a new appliance, this might require some discussion and again, mutual agreement. Now, it may be a family need or a necessity, but it's good to talk about it. And by setting that threshold, it's gonna prevent impulsive spending that could ultimately derail those financial goals. Now, we've all been there. You see something you really want, and before you know it, you've made the purchase and that wasn't in your budget. And then you might have some buyer's remorse. So by setting a spending threshold, you give yourself kind of a built-in pause button, if you will, ensuring that both of you are on board with the larger expenditure. It also encourages you to consider each other's perspective before making a significant financial decision, which can reduce the chances of conflict uh, later on. <laughs> All right, and then the fourth tip. This is kind of a nice one because it's a way to always give back. So this last tip is kind of close to my heart and that is just to always give back. You know, in the hustle and bustle of saving, investing, budgeting, it's easy to kind of become laser focused on your own financial goals. But I think it's important to remember that wealth isn't just about accumulating money, but it's about making a positive impact on the world around you as well. So take the time and sit down and discuss the causes or the charities that might mean the most to both of you. Maybe you're passionate about supporting education or perhaps your heart's drawn more to helping the homeless or people who are down on their luck. Whatever it is, find a cause that resonates with both of you and make giving back kind of part of that financial plan. This practice is gonna serve actually multiple purposes. First of all, it kind of keeps you grounded, reminds you of the big picture. And giving back can be incredibly rewarding, both emotionally and spiritually. And just remember, incorporating charitable giving into your financial plan doesn't have to be all that complicated. It could be as simple as setting aside a percentage of your income each month for the donations or volunteering your time at any kind of a local organization. The key is just to be consistent and intentional in that part of your life. So in the end, managing finances isn't always easy, but with clear communication, mutual respect, kind of a solid plan, it can actually turn out to be somewhat rewarding. Remember, money doesn't have to be a source of stress, but sadly, did you know it's the second leading cause of divorce? And a lot of times it's because both partners are not on the same page. So instead of making it like that, use it as a tool that can help achieve your financial dreams and make a financial impact on your family and the world around you. Well, as always, if you're looking for more ways to grow your wealth, build a strong financial future, reduce your taxes, improve your income stream, then you wanna follow me. I'm here to help you navigate those complexities of personal finance, building your net worth, and creating that financial security and fulfillment. Well, that's it for this video. Until next time, take care.